Hey, Yetta, is our house a zero? It certainly isn't. It's at least a 10 out of 10. I know it is beautiful. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. So we're excited to welcome you to another episode of Life's Inside Track. And today we have a special guest. It's not just my sidekick, Ken Decker. It's also Steve and Kevin from Watercolor. And so we're super excited to have them here because this is a topic that we didn't even know that much about. We knew some, but not enough. And so you get to have a sneak peek into understanding this whole concept of net zero. And we're excited because we're going to get to share tips, techniques, thoughts, and tools that we all need. We all deserve you, I, everyone. So we can turn our house into home, our families thrive, and we live the best life possible. Today, we're going to consider what is, how, like, why do we want a net zero home? Like, what is it? And why is it the home of the future? Mm -hmm. So, we're going to turn real quick to the experts in the room. Right. So, Kevin, I think, has the definition for this. What is a net zero home or a net zero ready home? Well, in the simplest terms, it is a symbol of quality and excellence around the construction, the design, the construction, the testing, and the certification of the home for how it's going to live, how it's going to uh, be livable and comfortable. Okay. And the net zero, because, you know, we usually think of a five-star rating or gold status or platinum status. Or 10 out of 10. But zero, why zero? Well, the zero really speaks to the efficiency of the home, the amount of energy that that home is ultimately going to consume, not just in your comfort, but in your living. So the idea behind a net zero ready is that you have a home that has the potential of generating as much energy as you will use in an entire year. So over the balance of a year, you get to zero. So including like... Not just heating and cooling of the house, but electricity, lights, cooking, watching TV, all of my electrical needs are supplied or could be like I produce as much electricity with the solar panels as I use for my family in a whole year. A hundred percent correct. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. So why are we, why are we heading towards net zero homes? I'm going to take that one. Um, the, and it's not only because you're super passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. But that's part of it. <laughs> it is part of it. But I, I'm like most people. Literally five years ago, I didn't know anything about this subject. And I was led, I think, to create this unique one-of-a-kind community in Westport, Ontario, mm-hmm. where we own some land. And we were trying to build a pedestrian-focused, walkable community because the village of Westport is over 200 years old. And we were focused on creating watercolor Westport. Uh, It's called that because we're sandwiched between these two lakes and they're going to be bright Newfoundland colored, Mm -hmm. colorful homes. So watercolor Westport. But then when I learned about building net zero ready homes, I got also really excited because as one of our consultants wrote in 1972, In popular science, our American friend Al Trellis wrote, the electrification of cars and homes is the only thing that is going to save this planet. So way back in 1972, they were using heat pumps. Heat pumps have been around 100 years, really. It's just an air conditioner running in Mm -hmm. reverse. Mm -hmm. So this idea of getting to net zero, a house that uses zero energy, by virtue of all these upgraded, proven technologies, I felt was really important because I believe in the creation mandate that we are to care for the earth. So I think this is a really big deal because you're either going to build a net zero ready home, ready for solar panels, or 99.9% of the new homes being built today are being built obsolete. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, so if we can build, and I, and I think I saw one on one of your uh, slides on your video, where the actual consumption of energy of a home was going down in halves. 
Like from 1970 to 1990 and then to 2020. And then the thought is that it's going to be half again by 2030 or 2035. Right. Which is incredible. So, so why not build all homes like that? Agreed. Why not? <laughs> Great we answer, are Kevin. absolutely desiring to encourage both consumers to ask for it and builders to build it. There is absolutely no reason. It's all proven technology. This is not new. Canada has been a leader in building science for 50 years, mm-hmm. looking at how do we build better homes. And better doesn't mean you have to give up anything. You actually gain. And that's the beautiful part of it. And we'll, you know, we can pull that apart. But the really great part of the uh, storyline is that, as you say, not only are you getting more cost effective living, but you're getting the gain of living in a more comfortable home. Right. Now, it must cost more to build a house that is super efficient. Um, And from watching your video again, I saw that a lot of the efficiency comes from sealing the enclosure and and increasing insulation so you don't have as much leakage out of your home. And on our average price of our homes, uh, we're building homes from $599, bungalow semis, about 1,000 square feet. The cost is almost, you might say, negligible. And you think, why aren't all builders building this way? And it's really just a mindset is once you have the resolve and you realize what's at stake, I mm-hmm. think many more builders will come around instead of waiting f- to be mandated legislatively to 2035. They'll recognize the brilliance of this is it's a better homeowner experience, a better quality of life for not that much more money. Right. And we just evolved into it on account of we didn't have natural gas. We kind of stumbled and bumbled and fumbled our way into it okay. because we had to have a much better building enclosure anyways. So that's why for us being uh, on electric heat or in our case, heat pumps, mm-hmm. it wasn't really that much more. Yeah. And so that's a good question because most people, as we help people buy and sell homes, many times if it has electric heat, People shy away from it. They, they run they, they go, for the no, hills. I, I, want, I want gas yeah. heat. And if that's not available, then maybe propane, even though that's a little more expensive. But heat pumps are an interesting thing. Now, I think heat pumps have come a ways because we had a heat pump in our three houses ago, right? Yeah. So what was that? 30 19, years? Well, about 1987, we installed a heat pump and it was horrific. But the bottom line is we also didn't have the enclosure to support the heat pump. And that was an incredible learning I got from watching your video. It's not the heat pump in a conventional house won't really help us that much. Mm -hmm. I think that's very wise. What's interesting is that technology has advanced so much Mm -hmm. that in that an Enercan, Natural Resources Canada, did a study across the country. So all climate zones, all housing types from existing houses to new houses to net zero ready houses and said in 2020, even at the energy prices in 2020, which we know have gone up a lot, a lot, even though even in 2020, Enercan said that we'd cross the tipping point where an electric air source heat pump. So a cold climate air source heat pump, what had crossed that threshold got crossed in 2020. And that was, as you say, Yetta, it's before we saw the escalation in the fossil fuel prices. Okay. Okay. So that's amazing. That's pheno- phenomenal. So, so it used to be that going green used to cost you extra dollars. The question is, is the future greener for you? And we're grateful to be your partners moving forward to worth, towards wealth, wisdom, and worth. Moving forward with the tech team. Moving forward.